I'm here with Cathy Lacordia again. Um, she's been chatting to us in a previous mini production that we did and we just felt it to be of such wonderful value that we are going to have another chat time with Cathy. So Cathy, thank you for being with us. Today I'd love to talk about distractions because I know it's a, a big topic for a lot of home educating moms. I think it's different if they people are taking their children to school and they leave them at school and they're going to their job or getting on with life in a different way. They've got a different kinds of distractions to deal with. But home educating moms really struggle with this word, mm. this topic, distractions. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? I think that very many people at home in the city, uh, your, your situation is different. You had different distractions where you're situated. But very many people who live in the city have distractions because they're a mom at home. And mm. there are certain presumptions that come when you are a mom at home, especially actually from the local church. You're at home, so please will you do this for so-and-so, and please will you do that for mm -hmm. so-and-so, and are you available to make a meal for so-and-so? And people actually find it really difficult to just be alone with their children at home when there are so many other demands as well. So that's one of one of the distractions. And there I think they really need to find the balance. And also they need to find the word no, which is very hard because now they are all nice, good, kind Christians and a meal is the right thing to do. But a meal is not the right thing to do every day of the week when their children are now taking a back seat. So they've got to learn to find a balance and they've got to learn to say no. And also, I think that when there's a real need, I think that there's, there are definitely times where we down tools. So somebody's in need, let's see to that need. But now and that's part of the education. Correct. Now, when you said we, that to me is the most important mm. part of that sentence because you, Kathy, are not rushing off to go and help the other person yes, in yes. need while your children wait. Yes. But you all yes, down tools. Yes. And as a family, yes. you go and meet this need. Yes. That is not a distraction anymore. That is That's now a education. service. And That's that is right. now education. Yes. And you spoke about the distraction of people having a different perspective of perception of who you are as being at home and now you're suddenly available. I've heard moms say that their own family members, their sister or yes. their cousin yeah. or their neighbor, feel that they can ask of them mm. to look after the children because that mom is working all day yes and the other mom who's home educating is at home all day yes. so she can look after her children you know that yes. whole yeah. scenario and people moms really struggle with that because they feel that they ought to say yes well mm. they are at home all day and so they can have her sister's children for mm. the afternoon or and then it becomes three afternoons a week and mm. And so can you talk to us a bit about that in the, the city environment where you've raised your children in the city and so, as we've said, your circumstances have been very different to mm. ours. Mm. And so your distractions are different. So if, mm. is that a real one that you came across when you were home educating? Uh, yes, as well, where there's a presumption. In fact, there's a, a family that I'm thinking of where um, the, the mom, oh, it's wonderful that you're home educating. And she would pop in in the morning and just visit. But mom, we're busy with things here. And she just wanted to visit. Because oh, Granny, you're, you're talking about yes, Granny. Oh, okay, yeah. yeah. And she just, she would just pop in and she, this, this mother said to me, what must I do? I need to chase my own mother away. You know? mm -hmm. So, but again, with, you've got to learn to be, be firm. That, but uh, I just want to put a different slant on that, if, if I may. And that is to say that when somebody had that problem and they approached us with us and told us the same thing, they, it was a real struggle because yeah. this is their own parent. Yes. Um, I asked my mother, you know, yeah. What what would you do in this situation? Because yeah. I haven't felt you to be that in yes, our yeah. home education. You've offered to help and support, mm. and but it might not be this, the case that other people mm. are experiencing that. So now I don't know how to help this person. This is what mm. I'm telling my mother mm. because that's not what you did. I mm. haven't had that experience mm. firsthand. And she said, "Well, Sonia, do you know why you never had that experience firsthand? Because you and Greg always invited us to be involved." Oh, in your home, you yeah. see, you always invited us to be involved, but it's not about Greg and I. It was actually also their support because mm. they believed mm. in what we were doing. You've also got the scenario of where you've got grandparents that are not approving mm. of what their children yes. are doing for the grandchildren. And that's another whole topic. Yes, it is. But um, in this instance, they supported what we were doing. Mm. But if a if her mom is not having that, the support of her mm. mother, and her mother's interrupting, why not involve her mother rather yes. than say? close the door to her, yes. she's arrived unexpectedly and announced, pull her in, pull yes. her into the experience and yes. into the day's learning and 
Mum, that's so wonderful to see you. Could you go and get the kettle on for us and I'll just finish this lesson with the children? You know, rather mm. approach it like that because, I mean, after all, what does the word say? The word tells us to honour and respect mm. our elders. And so that is a, a message that I think needs to come through is that that is what we ought to be doing, not shutting them out but involving them. But I think there it has to be... It takes more work, that. But there has to be a balance. Yes. And so so there, there's a balance of firmness and kindness. Mm. And... If it persists, then I think that the mom needs to be involved then in a way that helps to grow the children and doesn't distract just doesn't distract them from what they've got in mm. mind. The mm. other distraction in the city um, is loads and loads and loads of extramurals. And there's this thing that our children have to experience everything. <laughs> I've heard that a lot. <laughs> they don't mm. have to experience everything. And... It's very funny. There was one mom. Her husband did not want her to home educate because then the boys couldn't be part of a rugby team. And it's in a rugby team that you learn how to be a team member. And she was an engineer. She says, you know, I was an engineer in an engineering firm. And all of these men that had played rugby, they weren't team players at all. <laughs> but it's very funny. When people bring that exact topic up with me, I say, but what about your family being a team? Yes. To, for a family to be a team is hard work. Yes. It doesn't just happen. You've got to work at it. Yes. And so it seems that the perception is that being a team, learning to be a team player and understanding the importance of team happens on the, in, in sport mm. and nowhere else. Like you've mm. just indicated mm. that mm. The, the engineer mom said yeah. she didn't have team players that were <laughs> rugby. Yeah, so yeah, it is, it, it's just a different perception yes. again and a different way of looking and viewing these things. Yes. You know, they don't have to happen yes. and, uh, on the sports grounds. No. Or, yeah. And I think that there are a lot of things that are available to to moms, you know, and they they want their children to experience as much as possible. But the one advice, a bit of advice that I gave to to one mom who wanted her child to experience everything, said, but they don't have to experience everything simultaneously. So they don't have to go to ballet and to tennis and to netball and to chess and to everything simultaneously. Why don't you do seasons? Let them have a season of chess. Let them have a season of something else so that they don't have to go through everything at the same time. Because this woman was run ragged mm -hmm. just trying to get her children to all the various activities. And they don't have to experience everything. No. Well, I'm going to bring my parents back into the story here. Because um, what they did with that, because they also had a large family. Mm. And they had all the children had different interests. This one wanted to do, was interested in gymnastics and another one in um, sport, uh, cricket, whatever mm. it might be. And she said, actually, as a family, we're going to do whatever sport is supportive of the whole family. Mm. Now, I know you guys have sailed and been yachtsmen. Yes, yes. And so you go to the dam and you go sailing yes. for the day. And now that is a family sport. Yes. You're all doing it together. Yes. You're learning to sail. You're having picnic no, lunch. Correction. I actually supply the lunches for the fishing, but I don't fish. Okay. <laughs> all right. Thank you for the correction. But so that's what, that, that's just another way you yes. see we're helping um, those out there that are watching to look at these things from a different perspective, yes. not just take what they have become accustomed to yes. as being what has to be yes. and see there's a different way. Yeah. And the different way with my folks was that we would do a sport that involved the family. Mm. And then that was the experience. Mm. The experience became more than the sport yes. in that instance, as, as you can understand. Yeah. Now, one of the things that I wanted my children to do, I, I wanted them to play a musical instrument. It's something that I never did. And it's, it's a family thing, actually. My mother was forced to play the piano and she hated it. So then... Her there children was, didn't have to play no. the piano. And we, did, we never were exposed to anything music. So I would like my children to be able to play a musical instrument. So my eldest then went to music lessons. But by the time we had four children that needed to go to extramurals, there's, there's no ways that I could afford mm -hmm. for all of them to experience um, music. So the, the, the older two went to music lessons. And then by the time it was time for the younger two to learn music and do something musical, my older daughter taught the younger two. Correct. So that I didn't have to run around and take them to extramurals, and that and, worked. And now in my circumstances, being remote, as people call it, um, we didn't have, uh, we were not going to run into town, which was mm. 40 minutes drive away, to take, mm. um, Jamie's interested in playing the guitar, and we didn't have a guitar um, teacher around the corner, and the cost involved, mm. and the time, and the commitment, and having to be at a place. We couldn't do that. Our circumstance was so... Very different because we had chronic illness mm. to deal with on a daily basis. So our whole learning 
experience and learning lifestyle was different. Mm. So that's what we were speaking about earlier, is that our distractions and what we have to deal with and our own pressures and demands today are different in each mm. household. And so ours were different, but one of the things that we could not do at all was extramurals. We couldn't do it. It wasn't mm. a distraction. It wasn't a temptation because we couldn't do it. Yeah. But that didn't stop the child wanting to learn to play the musical mm, instrument. Mm. And so what happened now with Google and technology, yeah. that's a whole different story. But in those days, I found a guitar book with a CD, um, a DVD. We, he popped it into the DVD player, watched the tutor give the lesson and introduced the guitar and was, went through the book, learned all the basics, got the next book. Mm. learned through the, We didn't have a guitar teacher. So he taught himself. I couldn't teach him how to play the guitar right. because I hadn't taught, learned myself. <clears throat> and so he taught himself to mm. play the guitar. So there's not, it, it's not necessary to have to have a tutor or do all these extra meals. No. Like you say, take a break. You know, yes. these moms are running themselves ragged mm. from one end to the other. And it doesn't need to be. Look at your instance. Your two children learned to play the piano because Robin taught them, their mm. older sister. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So. What about other distractions? We've spoken about sport and music. Well, they're not really distractions, those. I wouldn't say... We've got to be careful to call them a distraction. It no, might be they an become, interest, yes, and that but they become a distraction. They become a distraction when they're trying to when they're trying to fit in too much. Mm. Yeah. So I think that you know I think that the children should do an extramural. I think they should have a, a an, an interest, and th there's a time and a place for that. I'm not saying that the whole idea is wrong, but I'm saying that you could you the, the children don't have to have this experience of everything in order to have a well-rounded education. Mm. Choose something that the children are interested in and run with run with that. I think it's what we were talking about in the the earlier clip. Let's keep it simple. Mm. And then, then it doesn't become a distraction. I think, as you've said, from raising your children in the city, the distractions are more real. And so they become something that people have to think about. Mm. As in, but other people are doing this. And maybe the moms are going to a support group and they're hearing all the extra things. Mm. That, and then their children hear about it and go, but mommy, I also want to do that. Mm. And I want to go to bed yes. and I want to. And so then the mother's feeling pressurized from her child. But when there's a different scenario and a different circumstance, such as our own, we, we didn't have those distractions. So they didn't become a temptation mm. and they didn't become a problem. Mm. And so we didn't have them. So you said earlier on that you think it's important, you know, that the children do have... Um, this extramurals, the extramurals are important to give them exposure and all yeah. this. In our instance, we didn't have them. And today the children are adults and now I've got to ask myself how important were they really? Yes. Because what needed to be done, we have to trust God is going to see to that. For an example, you've got a son that's got an interest in guitar. Next thing you find this book staring you in the face mm. because you're now attentive to the fact that your child has an interest and so now you see the thing that is that is going to support that interest but if I didn't see that and I couldn't get that book and you couldn't afford the guitar or whatever it is doesn't matter not in the long run right yeah that's what we've got to remind ourselves yes. of what matters to God ultimately is it as important to him as we're making it to ourselves is it as important to him as the child is making it out to be yes. because I have found that Younger parents seem to be more and more persuaded by their children. If you think of generations, <laughs> if you think of generations, yeah. there was none of that. Yeah. Well, maybe there was. I can't be so blunt. But there was less of that, yes. let's say, yes. of a child running the household. Mm. But it seems that that is more doable. It's happening more yes. in, in today's generation, in the younger generation. And it is, we know why, because of all the demands mm. on society and what the young children are requesting and demanding. And the parents feel the pressure. And I think that the, the way around that is if the parents actually come back to thinking, what are their goals and yes. what do they need to achieve with their children? And if they actually were to list their spiritual goals, their physical goals, mm -hmm. their academic goals, what what do they want to achieve for their children? And part of that is also their character development goals. Now, it could be, for example, that you have a child that doesn't listen to another adult. They take instruction from mommy, but they shy away from another adult. So maybe a guitar lesson where they're taking instruction from another yeah. adult is what is necessary so that that child develops that aspect of their character. So now the goal is about that rather than the music yes. Uh, lesson. Yes, yeah. so if you go back to your goals and what are your exactly. purposes and then fit in what you need according to what you want to achieve with your, with your children and 
then your, your, the extramurals is not an extramural for the sake of it. It's not an activity for the exactly. sake of it. It has a, an, a, an ulterior purpose, mm. and that will help you, you guide. Well, the thing that we found to be a tremendous support is our Konos living because we would see a lack in one of our character in one of us as far as mm. character is concerned, and then the whole family would be on board. This particular individual mm. needs extra support in this area as far as training character, and that became the goal. Not what we were learning through the activities we were doing mm. to train that characteristic, but more the goal being we need to actually exercise attentiveness now, yeah. and if part of that is having guitar lessons to learn to be more attentive yes. to another, well then that's yes. where you need to apply wisdom mm. and have guidance from the Lord mm. again. Come back to him yes. and, and and be guided by what's important to him. And it is important to him yes. that those children are raised and learning to be attentive. Mm. That is important. No doubt about that. But how our, how each family goes about achieving that objective is very unique to their Absolutely. location, their uh, budget. Mm. There's so many factors that are going to influence mm. what they can do about that. Mm. And now they go, oh, well, I can't because we can't afford or this or that. Then they, they mustn't be, I can't. Mm. <laughs> it must rather be, God, how can I do this yes. and get his help? And I think yeah. there are some lessons that the children can learn. And it's also part of life skills and part of education that when the budget is limited and they can't join the tennis club like their friend is joining the tennis club, what does Paul say? I've learned in everything to be content. Mm. The children must be taught to be content as in well everything. if they can't have those other things that the children other children have. Mm. And so that's life principles as well. But I think there are very many parents that are too scared to teach their children those life principles. They rather think that their children are dipping out. Their children are not dipping out. Mm -mm. If they grow in character, they're gaining everything. Mm. Absolutely. How many test me to be here now yeah. of parents that have followed that course and just actually gone with the support of the Lord yes. and followed their conviction, like we were speaking mm. previously, is how important that conviction is, come back to that, remind them of what their priorities and their goals are mm. and objectives and keep that in focus rather than yes. being pulled into the trap of yeah. all the distractions. And mm. yeah, that story you were telling earlier about a mom running ragged and doing everything and you said take one at a time, mm. I've suggested that to a few people as well. And the, the feedback of that has always been positive. Mm. And the fact that, oh, it's so much better. We've got mm. more time for this. Yes. And you ask them, what is the this? What do you have more time for? For being at home. Yes. For being a family. For getting to things that matter. Not running around, dropping the children mm. here, there, and everywhere. Yeah. Mm. So it, it would be different if we were hearing a testimony from people saying, oh, it was so much better when I was taking them to all the extra murals. Yeah. But that's not we hearing. No. What we hear is it. I no, mean, we, the, people, yeah. are, people are, are exhausted mm. because it's mm. too much. Mm. And you need, in, in, in part of your home education, you need time to yourself as a mom. You need time to yourself to, to gather your thoughts and be ready for the next day and, or be ready for, for the next week. Time to plan, time to, to gather your wits about you. And there's no time if, you, if you're running yourself ragged. Mm. Again, it's always a question of balance. And it doesn't mean to say that you don't do the extra murals, but find the balance. Mm. Find the time that you need to yourself so that you well, can actually well, gather what you need to gather. People might be asking, but how do I find that time? Because now I'm a home educating mom and I just don't get time for myself and I don't find time. And so what I have suggested to people in that regard is to say, how I used to plan for the week and have time just to sort of be a little quiet and, and, and consider the week ahead and the children and their needs and the family is it became dad time mm. where he did something special with the children. Mm. He would take them somewhere mm. and a couple of hours, whatever it was, and then that would be now his time to have alone mm. with the children while I had time to plan and prepare and get organized, mm. like what you were saying. Yeah, there's, there's um, some moms that have very successfully given themselves an hour or an hour and a half every afternoon. And it starts off when the children are toddlers and they need an afternoon nap. So mm. the child has an afternoon nap and mom gets to all the things that she needs to do, mm. whether it's home preparation or just answering mails, whatever it needs to be done. Mm. And then as the toddler grows out of that afternoon nap, it becomes a regular thing. No, you don't need the nap, but it's bedtime. So you're on your bed. You can read your book. You can do a puzzle. You can do whatever you want. But this is my time. I need to do this. So you you entertain yourself and I will do what I need to do. And so the children have learnt that there's an hour and a half after lunch where they have to read 
or rest or do something mm. so that mom can, can do what she... And, and it might just be return some phone calls. But mm. it's that downtime. And so that afternoon nap has grown into an afternoon space. The discipline. Yes, it mm. is. Mm. And, um, and it shouldn't be TV time. It must be bedroom time where mm. they are doing something constructive and it doesn't have to be the bedroom, you know, but you know mm. what I mean. It's yes. not in front of a screen. Mm. So that's, that's something where the children actually have to entertain themselves and, and not entertain each other. Because that become that could become something that mom has to sort out. You know, he wants my piece of Lego. No, and I want that piece. And mom is back sorting the children. No, mm. you're by yourself. Read a book. Do a puzzle. Do something that occupies yourself, mm. so that you each are in your own space. And mom's got time to do her things. So there's different things that different people do mm. to find that find that space. So Kathy, we've been talking about distractions, and we've got a little bit onto time, and then onto discipline. And I think it comes down to that. It comes down to discipline. Mm. You need to discipline yourself. Mm. Put your priorities in place. Do not get distracted of the things that are not important mm. to God. That's the bottom line. Yes. Yeah. And I think if you've got if you've got plans and purposes for your children, and if you've got goals that you want to achieve, and you've got a, a, a structure within which you work to achieve those goals, then you're less likely to be distracted. Mm. And that doesn't mean to say the distractions are not going to come. No, they're going to carry they will. coming. But yeah. if you if you have a structure within which to work and you've got the discipline to do it then you could be able to cope with the distractions with ease. Exactly. And confidence. Confidence, like you were saying mm. earlier, to say no. Confidence. Yeah. And not say no feeling like you're missing something, yeah. but say no confidently. Yes. No, we're not doing that because we're doing this instead. Yes. Because this is the plan we have that we have checked with God and this is what's best yes. for this family at this time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for being with us again. And we hope we have another opportunity to chat with you. With another topic. Yes. Okay. And thank you for watching. Bye.